In this tutorial, we'll take a look at uh, the normal distribution and z-scores. And in the first example here, we're given the heights in centimeters of uh, 22 workers at a, a local call center. It's one of five in the area. We'll get into the one of five, what that means uh, about in the next page. And so here's the 22 people's heights in centimeters. And we're supposed to construct a, a relative frequency polygon to show this distribution. And so I categorized into uh, seven bins here. Notice that the uh, the lowest height is uh, 153, so I went 150 to just under 155, 154.9, and then the uh, upper 150s, lower 160s, upper 160s, and the highest I need to go, uh, we have a person that's 183 centimeters here. So 180 to 184.9 was the, uh, there's one person in that category. And if we divide each of these by 22, then these are the relative frequencies for each of those, and that's what's plotted in the table over here. Now, if we... Uh, Take a look at, and, and this is a table and then a graph, for the uh, heights of all, uh, all the workers in all the call centers. So it's 105 people all together. And so uh, here's the frequency, <coughs> frequencies. And of course, if I divide those by 105, I'll get the, uh, the, the frequencies that I'm plotting here. I didn't bother to put them in the table. Notice that it's becoming more bell-shaped, more normal-shaped. So it's reasonable to... Um, use a normal curve to approximate something like this. Uh, a normal curve has uh, the highest uh, uh, probabilities or frequencies are in the middle and it tails out towards either end symmetrically. as This is fairly symmetrical. So this is what the normal distribution curve looks like. Um, it's symmetrical about a single mode, and because of the symmetry, the mean, median mode are actually all the central value here. This is the equation of this curve, and for the purpose of this course, you do not need to know that. I just included it in the lesson here, uh, or the tutorial, uh, but that is the equation that produces this curve. What we're going to be mostly looking at is this kind of thing here. These are called the standard normal cumulative probability tables. And depending upon the course and the textbook you use, uh, you might only actually have this part of the table here. Because it's symmetrical, you see right in the middle, that's 50% of the data below there. And so because of that, the fact is it's symmetrical, you really only need half of this table. But for convenience in the textbook we're using, it actually goes from negative close to 3 to positive close to 3. And these numbers are standard deviations. So that's, that's the, uh, the, the mean right in the middle. That means one standard deviation below. That's one above, two above, three above, two below, three below. Okay, so uh, and these are the probabilities that any z-score is less than any particular value. Okay, so and we'll be using these as we go through the examples in the next few pages. So on to a few examples. So the masses of a sample of 20 boxes of chips is given below in grams. And so here's all the masses and we're supposed to find the mean and standard deviation for this sample. And so I used uh, the GeoGebra application. So 279.3, 283.3, next number is 282.1. So here's all the numbers. And of course, 280.1 is the very last one here. There's 20 of them. And so uh, we're calc uh, and the, so the mean is this value. And that's the st sample standard deviation right there, 2.7672. And so here's my mean and standard deviation. I rounded the standard deviation to two decimal places. And so it says draw a histogram of the data. There's the histogram of the data. And it certainly looks relatively symmetrical about the middle. So it would be reasonable to uh, assume we could use the normal here. Now the company claims their chip boxes weigh 280 grams. And you're asked, is this claim substantiated by the statistics shown? So because of the fact that the mean is slightly over 280, then this claim is plausible. Okay, so uh, 280 is pretty close to the middle of the graph, so there are, there are some bags that are a little bit below and some bags that are a little bit above. And it's relatively bell-shaped, so that is a reasonable claim. So for question E here, we're asked, uh, what is the probability a randomly chosen box of chips has a mass less than 282 grams? So what we need to do is find the z-score for 282. And here's the mean, here's the median, so uh, we would go 282 minus 280.4 and divided by 2.77, the standard deviation. So 
that gives us a Z score of 0.58 and you just round to two decimal places because these tables go to two decimal places. So the probability that Z is less than 0.58, we're at less than 282. Uh, so in the table here, okay, it's 0.58, so the first decimal place is right here. So we go 0.5 and we go over to the 0 0.08 column. So we're looking at that number right there, the 0.7 190. So the probability is that it's less than 0.5, it would be uh, 71.9.7190. So rounding to, to uh, uh, one, uh, the whole number percent. So it would be about a 72% chance the mass is less than 282 grams. In the F here, we're asked, what's the probability a randomly chosen box of chips has a mass between 277 and 283? So we need to find the Z scores for both of them. So let's do the, uh, the 277 first. So 277 minus the 280.4 and 2.77, same mean and standard deviations we used up here in E. So the, for the 277, it works out to Z score of negative 1.23. So it's negative 1.23 standard deviations below the mean. We also need to find the uh, z-score for 283, so we do 283 as well, and it works out to 0 0.94. So the, uh, those are the two z-scores, so we want the probability of randomly chosen boxes between those. So between them, we're looking for the probability that z is between negative 1.23 and 0 0.94, so less than this, greater than this. So we would find the probability it's less than 0.94 and subtract from that the probability it's less than the negative 1.23 because we want the between. So when we look this up in the table, this is the probability that a, um, a z-score is less than 0.94 and this is the probability it's less than negative 1.23. Because we want what's between, we subtract those. So there's the negative 1.23. I've got a portion of the uh, standard uh, table here. And then we want 0 0.94, 0 0.9, and then 4 is over here. So those are the two probabilities that we're subtracting. 0.8264 minus 0 0.1093, which is 0 0.7171. Very close to the probability up here. That's the coincidence. So there's about, a, again, a 72% chance the mass is between 277 and 283. This is actually between 3 grams below the mean and 3 grams above. Uh, one last example in G here asks, what is the probability a randomly chosen box of chips has a mass greater than 285? So we did the less than, and now we're, we did the between probability on the previous page. Now we're doing a greater than. So we're doing one example of each. So the, again, we need to find the Z score for 285. So we do 285 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, and we get 1.66. So in the... Uh, we want the probability that it's greater than 1.66. Now remember, the tables give the probability it's less than. And since the probability of the entire, all, all the outcomes of the sample space is 1, then what we do is we look up our 1.66. So 1.6 and then 6, this 0.9515 number. And so it's 1 minus that probability. So because of the fact we're doing greater than and the table gives less than, we want really, see, 95.15% is less than 1.66. So the probability that we're greater than that, we, we would subtract that from 1. Because see, it's just, well, it's just slightly under 5% to make up to the 100%. So that's why you subtract it from 1. So we get 0 0.0485. So the probability of randomly chosen box chips as a mass greater than 285 grams is about 5%. That would round to about 5%.